Today, we're going to take a look at the inside and the outside of a 1997 Beaver Monterey named Maudie. Let's begin right here at the front door. How about if we work our way around the outside of Maudie from the front door, and then we'll work our way back to the front door, and then we'll head inside. Okay, beginning here, here's the, uh, the deco that explains what this beast is. It was built in Bend, Oregon, 1997, March. It's a 30-foot beaver Monterey, which is the cheap end of the beaver line, the lower end. Um, and 30 foot uh, is, is quite an unusual one to have a cat diesel in it. No slides, just old school. Okay, let's begin. I've got, I'm just going to back up here and let you have a look at the awning. It's a um, original awning, I believe. It's just excellent, easy to use, simple, no electric things to go wrong. We love it. Let's open up a B door here. I'll explain things that we've replaced and things that we still need to do as we go through this. Now, I've emptied out everything for you. I thought the last thing you need to see is all my junk. So I've cleaned it up. And let's make something clear. Maudie is not for sale. We're not doing this for resale. We want to keep this thing. I just want to show it to you. I want to share it with you. Now, this is, you can see, the Bay Area. It's really quite cavernous, not as big as a lot of the big coaches, but you can get a lot of, uh, a lot of things in here. And I undid the screws to this panel because I want to show you, this is the water tank. Pull this down. I'm going to back up so you can see. So this is Monty's water tank. It's 100 gallons. And I like to inspect this, you know, every so often, at least once a year, to make sure everything's okay. But that's what a 100 gallon water tank looks like. I wonder if I can just go around the side of it here. There's not a whole lot to see. Do you know something that amazes me though? It doesn't have any baffles. At least I, I don't believe it has baffles. And when you think of 100 gallons of water, or let's say 50 gallons of water if it was half full, sloshing around as you're going down the highway around curves, that's a lot of water sloshing. Think of the force. But it was engineered this way. It's lasted 27 years. So let's just say that the engineering must be correct. This is our main drain. And this is the part that goes right through the floor to the outside. And I don't think you can see the uh, the um, the actual measurements. You know when, you, when your tank says one half full, three quarters and so on? There's electronic devices on it. I wonder if you can see them back here. It's hard to see. I've opened up the wrong side for you. But anyway, that's where the, the one quartered, one half, and so on sensors are. You may be wondering what these are. I put these on because I didn't like the idea of a threaded um, restrainer like this to be rubbing against the tank. So this rubber is just to protect it. Now you can see all the way through to the other side. The only thing I didn't take out of here is this. It's our electric front step that I really messed up when we were coming out of Mexico into the US this past season. I caught it on a big uh, CAT scanner at the border and uh, practically tore it off. So I just took it off and we're taking it back to Mexico to our favorite welder who's going to resurrect it for us. This has the original uh, 1000 watt inverter and it works just fine. You know, we may upgrade, but we've, we have to do so many other things. It's not really a priority right now. It works like it am. We have one extinguisher here. I can't encourage you enough to have extinguishers on your RV. I think most of you do. Um, 
you know, if there was an accident and you could help somebody, it's great to have an extinguisher. Or if you have a fire yourself, this is a likely spot because you can see this is where our fridge uh, exhaust is. Something that I, a viewer told me some time ago, and I'm embarrassed to say I haven't done it. He said, make sure that you move that fire extinguisher from this location to this location at the front. His point is, or was, and I totally agree with him. If you have a fire in your rig, there's a really good chance it's going to start at the back wheel, one of the rear wheels, or where your fridge is. And you don't want to have an extinguisher directly in the area where the fire is likely to start. So I just need to remove those brackets and move it over here. And then if you're, if you witness an accident and you can help somebody, or if you need it quickly for yourself, you just jump out your front door, open up this bay door, grab the extinguisher and away you go. Okay. Um, just before we leave this area, I wanted to let you know, these are weak points on any RV of this age. This mount and the mount up there for the awning. I took those completely off, redrilled the holes, filled them with epoxy, and then redrilled them again because water gets in there after many years. You know, the seals break down, and once you get water in there, it starts to weaken. And the last thing you want to have to happen is for your awning mount to come off while you're going down the highway. That would be a mess. So those are really worth looking at on every rig, especially one that's 27 years old like this. So those are nice and firm now. Okay, let's work our way around. Coming up to the battery bay. Oh, I'm trying to do this one-handed. Excuse me, folks. Okay, the battery bay. So we have two starter batteries on the left-hand side, and we have four deep cycle golf cart batteries on the right-hand side. Pretty straightforward, and you can see the pin there. That pin just comes out, and the whole tray slides out so that you can have nice, clean access. Now, we find that this, this, these number of batteries is just fine for us. I know some people have lithium batteries, and, and uh, they have a whole, whole whack of batteries, we don't have the, our power needs aren't that great. So we do just fine with this. Oh, I just noticed, you can see this green light. This is a booster for our tire minder system. When we're towing, that booster boosts the signal from our tow car up to the monitor uh, that's on our front dash. And actually our tow car is right here. can see the sensor so the, there's a battery in here that transmits a signal and the booster that we just saw over here boosts the signal so that we are able to read the tire pressure on our tow car quite easily works like a darn we use a tire minder system and with an old coach like this of course it didn't come with a built-in tire pressure monitoring system I know the new ones probably all do but come on we're old we have to upgrade if we need things like this. So it, it's just reminding me that that shouldn't be on right now because it's not drawing much, if anything. But I, I like to leave it off. So when I wired it in, I put in this fuse and see if I can do this one-handed. I'm just gonna take this fuse out. there. I've taken the fuse out, put that in my pocket. I usually do that each time we stop, if we're stopping for any length of time. And then you just replace the cap, tuck this wire away. Anyway, there's the battery system. Next on the list is our service bay. So here is Monty's service bay. Kind of a neat collection of gadgets. Just starting on the right hand side, these two valves 
allow you to eliminate water from your compressor. The onboard compressor, it has two sections, one valve for each se section, and it just al allows you to expel the moisture that's built up in the, in the uh, bottom of the tank. Important to do. This allows us to, this connection allows us to connect an air hose so that we can uh, top up the air pressure in Mahdi's tires as well as our tow car tires. This is an air filter gauge. It basically measures the flow of air through your air filter. The air filter in Mahdi is about the size of our tow car. It's huge. You know I'm exaggerating. But uh, anyway, this is a good, good uh, gadget to have. When you see a lot of yellow, when it moves up, you can tell that it, then that, that your air filter is becoming very full. So uh, that's a gauge to watch. Old school, I tell you, it's a light. Look at this. <laughs> Not very bright before the days of cell phones. It's a, a light that you can just remove and it extends the the um, the length of Monty all the way to the end. It's just quite a, oh, it went out. Well, what kind of a light is that? Oh, it's back on. Hey, it's old. I think it's quite funny. Uh, I keep a bulb in it just to make sure that we have something because you never know, your cell phone may not be working when you need it. So, antiquated light. This might be in a coal mine. Uh, these buttons allow you to uh, manipulate the leveling system. There's three uh, stabilizers on Muddy, one on the front, two in the rear. I have never used this. We always use the, uh, the button pad on the inside of the dash. But anyway, it's here for you. Oil pressure, temperature gauge, engine oil, transmission oil, engine start, engine stop. So if a mechanic is working on your engine, it's just kind of handy to be able to do it from here rather than going inside every time you need to start and stop the engine. And this uh, little gizmo allows uh, a Caterpillar authorized person to plug in their computer. This is uh, one of the first years I think that CAT, I think this is the first year that CAT did an electronic version of this 3126. Other earlier versions were mechanical engines. And uh, this, the downside of that is that you need a CAT authorized, CAT authorized person with their computer to read whatever is going on with your engine. I personally like the mechanical engines better. These are the two fuel, f fuel filters. Let's try this again. These are the two fuel filters. The one on the left is the, uh, the rougher one in terms of it takes out the big crap and uh, it's a water separator as well. So that's really your, your uh, primary filter. This is a secondary filter that is more refined. It takes out the smaller particles, just keeps your fuel nice and clean. And we have a paper towel holder and we have a reservoir for the hydraulic fluid. So that's basically it. Moving around. Now, keeping in mind that this is a 27 year old motorhome, you can imagine how awful the original taillights were. So we upgraded to these newer taillights. These are LEDs. I managed to find the same manufacturer, the same, it's exactly the same taillight as the originals, just in LED. It was fantastic. And the only thing at the back here that we've done that you may have seen in another video is we put in a rear camera system up there. We use a blue ox tow system, which we absolutely love. It's been flawless. And with towing a, a Fiat 500, you don't have any idea it's here apart from seeing it in your two cameras. There's a built-in original camera you can see below the hollow view and that one shines down on the tow hitch and then the uh, hollow view above it pans out much, uh, much, much greater distance. Okay, moving around to the port side, left-hand side. And this is our 6.3 kilowatt Onan generator. Now this is a propane generator. And it's been really good. The only thing we've had to do to this is replace the starter motor. 
I change the filter, air filter regularly, along with the oil filter and the oil. And um, there's a manual start right here, if you wish. Start, stop. But we always start it inside. So this is our wet bay, and boy, do I get it wet. It's a really handy service bay. I'll just go over quickly the everything that's in here. You can see has a shower, outdoor shower. These are the levers for the shower. It's really handy when you're at a dump station, for instance, and you need to wash your hands and you don't want to go inside the coach. I just turn this like that, turn the handle on, wash your hands, just really handy. I would never recommend this kind of handle, though I put this new faucet on and it's too easy to hit it accidentally. And if you do that and this is on, then you just drain your tank. It's a stupid system. So I need to get a, a more definite handled uh, system than that. We have the city water inlet here. So you just plug your water line into that when you're um, at an RV park or whatever. Soap dispenser, a TV and phone connection, which we never use, of course. The sandy flush is where you can uh, attach a hose to flush out your uh, black tank. 50 amp service. All of this is original except for, well, no, it's not all original. The only thing that's original is this and this, I guess, and this. Um, and then we have our 50 amp service, our sandy flush to flush out the black tank, uh, TV and phone connection, which we never use. That's really dated. And it's got a very basic manifold. I made this panel some time ago and I've just been too lazy to label it yet. Drives Michaela nuts. She comes out here to turn a valve and she doesn't know which way it goes. And and if I leave it for a while, I forget. So I guess I better label them. Um, pretty basic system though. When you want to fill your tank um, at a, a water source, you just turn the valve this way and you fill your tank. When you're boondocking and you just want to draw from your tank yourself, you turn this up. And we just have three valves. Sorry. There's four valves, but three active line valves. This is the um, the shower. This is the bathroom sink. This is the kitchen sink. And this is hot. And this is cold. Very simple. You can isolate which line that you want to shut off. And this valve and a similar valve underneath. Those are the uh, valves to drain either the hot water line or the cold water line. So very simple. Black tank, gray tank, and the discharge pipe. We've had to replace all these gas cylinders, but that's expected on a, on a coach of this age. I just bought those at an auto parts store. I'm going to open up this bay as well to get some extra light in here. Okay, now we can see a bit easier inside. So you can see the other side of the water tank with the panel up. And I'll we'll just go in this way. You can see the electric step that we saw from the other side. And there's looking out to the other side of the, of the coach. And here we have the transfer switch and an energy management system. Now this is new. The transfer switch, I believe is the original and the um, EMS system or the energy management system from Progressive Industries, I just put in last year. It's been a godsend. It's, it's just saved us more than once. I'll explain that a little bit better in a minute. This little door just allows you to get at the water pump. Now that water pump is new. It, uh, it, it's a handy little trap door because when we winterize, when we want all the water out of this thing, what I do is I put my hand in through here and I just undo the strainer and I let the water just drop through the bottom of the water pump and it just drains the system as well. Just another low point that can freeze. Okay, let's back out. So this energy management system being hardwired is really nice because then you don't have to um, concern yourself with having to plug in one of the uh, um, portable units. And it just lets us know if the electrical source is okay, in a nutshell. I won't go into all the details because you can watch that video as well, but when I put that in. But this is where I've put the monitor 
and when we plug it in it tells us what the uh, condition of the power is and if you've got a fault it'll tell you and you shut her down or if it's a significant fault it won't allow power to go through to your unit so it's a real godsend okay so that's that side of the coach or that part of it propane tank and this is the the old sewer hose storage which we never use for that we have our our sewage system our pipes and everything uh, in, in um, containers but this is really handy to put those uh, small propane containers that you use for barbecues it's really handy okay and here is the valve system for our propane tank it's a huge propane tank it goes the width of Monty I'm just putting up a picture here of what it looks like underneath so I don't have to get down on my knees. I just happen to have a picture. Um, we're going to have these valves replaced before we leave for this uh, season. This is the liquid valve that goes to the directly to the generator. And this is the vapor valve that runs the fridge and the um, hot water tank. Okay, it's a 50 gallon system, so it's huge. Moving forward. And this is the electrical bay. <clears throat> I don't have a clue uh, what I would do in here, but I suppose if you were an RV tech or a mechanic, um, this is probably one of your favorite playgrounds or playrooms in this RV. But it's just a nice, neat little uh, compartment that has things that are important, I guess. Oh, for heaven's sake, I forgot another thing to tell you about. You can tell this is not scripted. Last year, we finally had all the windows replaced. I hope this shows up well in this light. We took the uh, coach to RV Glass Solutions in Coburg, Oregon, near, near um, Eugene, Oregon, and they popped out every one of these windows and replaced all the glass and resealed them. We are so thankful. We were so pleased. We had creeping seals before this and it looked awful. Okay, let's go in and see the inside of this beast. Okay, folks, we're inside Monty now. And please remember, this is 27 years old. It's really outdated. And we know that we're slowly working our way through. What we've been doing is making sure that the underbelly, everything underneath this thing in terms of the mechanical um, sections, are in really good shape. Wheel bearings, um, control arms, airbags, that kind of thing. We've been focusing on that as well as the roof to make sure it's watertight because we had a lot of water issues. And we're only now at the point where Monty doesn't leak anymore and we can now finish off new headliner and do stuff on the inside. So we're going to be getting this couch reupholstered, we're wallpapering, we're just bringing the inside up to a more current uh, look. But in many ways, we kind of like the old look as well. But it's old school. And I know a lot of people will go, oh my God, look at all these dark colors and so on. But we like it, you know. It's not a, a, a modern looking RV, but boy, it's really well built. Okay, so starting off, let's just start at the front. I'll sit down with you and we'll go over the cab area. So here... Again, pretty basic dash. We've got an old school um, CD player, cassette player. Um, typical gauges. Funny enough, the air conditioning, which is this button, works like a dam. Really good air conditioning. This is where we start the generator from. I showed you that remote switch as well. Just moving to the right here. There's no method to my madness of showing you things here, folks. It's just the way I'm moving around. Um, I'm going to be finishing off this whole cabinet area because it looks pretty crappy. Maudi only came with one cigarette lighter. Um, so when we want to plug in additional devices like GPSs and so on, we've just put this unit in, which allows you to put in three more um, electric devices, electronic devices. Actually, there's two USB plugs on the other side of it, so you can attach five devices. And then this is the control for this unit 
And uh, for those of you who watched our recent um, review of the new dash cam, this is the uh, remote control for it. And there's the dash cam. It's an A229 Plus Viafo dash cam. Okay. Now, moving along here, you can just see it's a very basic dashboard, old school. 76, sorry, 77,636 miles on Mahdi. Um, we have fuel, our air pressure, temperature gauge, and our voltmeter. Our um, tachometer, tachometer, and our speedometer, both in kilometers and in miles per hour. When we imported Mahdi from the U.S., one of the requirements was it had to have kilometers per hour. So these creative people in Bend, Oregon just stuck little stickers on it. They're not perfectly aligned, but good enough. And that, that got us through. It was hilarious. We have an air horn. Uh, we have um, our air brake uh, uh, release and... Um, Applier, apple. What am I trying to say? You know what I mean. This is how you apply the air brake. This does not have air brakes, however. It has disc. It has um, disc brakes, but it does not have um, an air air brake system. But the um, emergency brake is air, and our airbags, of course, are airbags. They're air. Fog lights, headlights. Okay. And this is a rear camera that was installed in when Mahdi was made. And this, uh, I can't turn it on right now, but this will uh, show Mahdi's uh, connection with our tow car really well. It shines right down on the actual uh, Blue Ox tow bar system. And this is another new addition here. It's a Halloview rear camera unit. Love it. Allows us to see behind us as we're driving. It's just it's ideal and again there's a, a video on the installation of that coming along the side we have a six-speed allison transmission linked to our caterpillar 3126 engine really good combination i understand windshield wipers and we have toggle switches just old school toggle switches this is our cruise control button this turns it on and off when you want to set your cruise, you just push this black button. This is the resume button for your, your cruise control. Mirror control. Left, right, up, down, that type of thing. This is the uh, heated mirrors. This is the battery booster so that when you want to connect uh, both banks of batteries together to give your engine a real kick, then this is a switch. And this is the exhaust brake switch, which I just live by. Our, our brakes hardly get, our service brakes are hardly used. We use this all the time, except when we're in residential areas and we're told not to. Uh, this is a fan control. And this is our leveling system. Remember when I was in that, uh, that rear bay and I said, this is how you start the engine? Well, I was wrong. Well, and there were three buttons to push to um, use your levelers. It's just a, a duplication of this. And this works very well as well. Funny enough, we have two rear uh, stabilizers and only one in the front. But hey, it works. And this is a level so that when you're parking, you know when you're level. It doesn't work. Now looking overhead, we have, again, pretty basic gauges. This is our main control panel. We have gray water reading, black, fresh water, water pump battery condition, and our LP gas status. And this is the controller for the inverter. A light switch. And there's our hours for our generator, which is 769 hours. So not very many. And hey, I get it. Many of you would look at this interior and say, oh my God, I'd be ripping out that carpet right away. Do you know, when you're old like us, the carpet feels kind of good underfoot. We like it. And, you know, we, we're pretty good about keeping it clean. We have a, one of those Dyson vacuums that we use several times a day. And um, we shampoo it two or three times a year. We kind of like it. 
we may get to the point where we put hardwood down, but for now it's just fine. The, the cupboard space is just amazing in these things. They're deep. Beaver was known for its cabinetry. It's one thing I am aware of that when they were built in the, uh, the um, 80s and 90s and even beyond, they were known for their excellent cabinetry. And in fact, when uh, Safari bought out Beaver, I believe it was mainly to get their cabinetry skills. Uh, I, there was obviously much more to it than that, but I think that was one of the key factors. So here's our galley. A little princess propane stove that works really, really well. This is a, a replacement microwave, I believe. We didn't put it in, it was already there. Uh, this switch for the hot water tank, very easy to get at. Uh, inverter plugs in the, in the kitchen. Lots of plugs in this old thing. You can see there's one under there. One under there. There's one under there. They're all over the place. I won't open up every cupboard. That would drive you nuts, I'm sure. But you can see what's here, and it's really well-made cabinetry. Somebody said to us once, why don't you paint this all? You could paint it white. Oh, no. I think we'll just keep it, thanks. Okay, let's move into the bathroom. It's a midship bathroom, as I call it, between the door that you're looking at goes into the bedroom. Anyway, I'm just going to scan around so you can see, see what's here. You can see through there the water damage from our leaking uh, skylight dome, which I replaced just about a month ago. And this is why we have to replace all the headliner throughout the whole coach. But at least now we know it's watertight. Uh, an amazing amount of water went through there. So I'll just pan around, trying to keep myself out of the mirror so you don't have to look at me. There are more outlets underneath the kitchen cabinet. It's a porcelain toilet. We replaced this lighting fixture. It adds a really nice ambience to the room. And we could not stand the carpet that was throughout this bathroom when we bought Maudi. Can you imagine? You know, that's one of the downsides of getting the cheap, uh, the cheap model of Beaver. They just, you know, it's cheap just to put carpet throughout. So we had our, a Mexican friend retile this for us. And what a difference. We can now keep it clean. But can you imagine carpet all around your toilet? And ah, I rebuilt, rebuilt the pedestal part. And it's just worked like a darn ever since. Okay. Oh, before I leave, I want to show you. We are currently wallpapering Maudie. That's our latest project. And this, um, this is the new wallpaper. I'm just going to back away a little bit so you can see it. And I was not keen on wallpapering. Michaela wanted the wallpaper and I just wanted to paint the walls, a nice durable paint. But she insisted on this and I'm really glad she did because it's standing up really well. The way it works is this is a um, um, pre-glued wallpaper that's adhered really well. And then I followed up with, it's a paintable wallpaper. I followed up with two, I think maybe three coats of semi glossy enamel paint on this. And it really makes the surface hard. You can see how it's, uh, it's standing up really well and where it wraps around the corners, like right here where my hand is. It's adhered really well. This is three years old now. I just haven't finished this project. But we're really pleased with it. And around the kitchen sink, sorry, the, the, the bathroom sink, it's really standing up well. 
I need to put a uh, th that wall section in the middle. You can see the corner. I need to put some molding in there. But it's standing up extremely well. So I'm really glad she made me do that. Women are always right. You remember that, guys. Just to give you an idea what the wallpaper um, difference is. You can see I've come right around the corner with the new wallpaper right here. And I stopped here. So I, I will now run my new piece from here along alongside the kitchen area. But what a difference. You get rid of this, this really dated look and a nice creamy wallpaper that should stand up really well. So I have to remove these backboards and I'll reseal them. But the next time you see the inside of Monty, this wallpapering job should be done. I still have to do just this main cabin. Oh, I almost forgot. While we're in the bathroom, these are the two mirrored doors. I just opened them up to give you an idea what's inside. Huge area. I mean, it's amazing what we've, we've come home with in this cupboard. And this is what it looks like from a different angle with the doors shut. Okay, could we please finally see the last room? Okay, we're going into the bedroom, I promise. So here's our bedroom. I turned the lights on just to make you feel comfortable. And um, I thought I'd put this wallpaper out to show you what we're using in here. Uh, Home Depot special, inexpensive, paintable wallpaper, kind of a ribbed look to it. Really easy to apply. But you can see it's bedside uh, drawers. Big cabinet on each side, overhead lighting, lots of cabinetry up top. It's just a really cozy bedroom. Queen size bed. And on each side there are um, wall plugs, or bed plugs, I guess you could call them. Not bed bugs, bed plugs. And our Caterpillar diesel engine is under this bed. I'm not going to pull this up. If you want to see what the engine looks like, if you could go back to one of the other videos that I'm putting in our description list, uh, it, it, it will show you how the engine uh, fits under there and all of that. But you don't want to see that again. I'd like to thank one of our viewers, Frosty, who told me that I should make this video. Thanks, Frosty. And I hope that you enjoyed the video. And please, if you want to ask me anything about this old beaver, just email me directly at Chrysler Pacific, at C-R-Y-S-L-E-R, Pacific, all one word, at Outlook.com, or put your comment in the comment section. Either way, happy to see you. Thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.